Yeah. And then I died that night. I didn't kill it. You know how many Jason Statham movies I watched it, yeah? Wait, wait, wait. It's all good, bro. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a new year at the same time. Okay. How is that, brother? <laughs> hey guys, look, I'm with. I'm with three popcorns, and I'll be the cheese. Yeah. Robo Pops. I'll be the cheese girl, I'm a cheese boy, da. We motivate, then we laugh as well. Stay on brand, never hard to sell. Got real chats, now my LOL. So we both got gang and we blessed as hell. See a lala story. Pitsin on my guest, a nice and moy. You and I'm a bundles, not of choice. Said it's simple pops and robot boys. Popcorn and cheese. 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 Call you one word like friends like these. Popcorn and cheese. Popcorn and cheese. Popcorn and cheese. Call it one boy like friends like me. Popcorn and cheese, episode 47. Yo, thank you, my brother, with the skinny jean. It looks prepared. Yeah, that was prepared. Like, yeah, he yeah, was yeah, rehearsing it just now. I had it. That popcorn is up. That, that Bruno's head looks like the roll on. You have the. <laughs> <laughs> of the empty one. <laughs> Shield. It won't let you down. <laughs> no, you didn't let us down with that clap, my brother. Uh, Thank good. you, man. Do you know what was the story why he's here? The clapper? Yes. Oh, the guy who looks like Desmond Dube before. Ah, actually, he, uh, he does. Before maybe. the live cover. He looks like Desmond Dube during the, the live cover auditions. Before windy, 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 windy. <laughs> Before the man. Yeah, ah. but he's a, he's a big fan of the show and he came to do uh, a clapping thing. I got to know him earlier. That's why I'm not guarding him because, you know, soft heart. Ah, that means he has money. If you're not guarring. <laughs> yeah, what? What is it? Yeah, no, he works for a big... Uh, you, you uh, can say channel. <laughs> you can say that. Oh, he works for DSTV. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. No, no, hey, don't that... judge a book by its car. <laughs> no, right. No, no, the, that, the, the face is so ABC one. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the face is Boma, you know what I mean? But that club had so much more. So, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> cheese boys, cheese gang, and the cheese girls. <laughs> Yay! Hey! We not me, my one. dog. I'm not used to these nice things like air conditioning. Ah. Cheese boys, cheese girls, and the cheese gang. Welcome to a super special episode of Popcorn, Popcorn and, and cheese. cheese. Before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce everybody you see and don't see on the camera mm -hmm. uh, coming in behind the scenes, behind the monitor. Yes, there's a monitor where we are currently viewing ourselves <laughs> right now. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting behind that monitor and unable to view Himself, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, dubbed the Beyonce of the group, Lebua Homo's finest, a man Which one, who this one? one day when he finally goes back to Lebua Homo, will have an electric fence around his tombstone. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please put your digital hands together, make some noise, give it up for the one and only, weighing in at 46 kilograms, Titi Chumarik the Barberi. Yeah. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, every taxi needs someone who's going to count the money. That's who <laughs> he is, ladies and gentlemen. Dancing, poetic, <laughs> repically, bionically, weighing in at 47 kilograms, wearing a size 14 Nike. Yes, <laughs> he wears four of Titi's feet on two shoes. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands Which together. Which one is this one? Columbine's finest, all the way from Montillo. Child of veteran MK poet, the one and only, Robito, the boy. Yes. Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, you are all aware of the direction that which the ship is going, but we cannot be directed without a leader who is steering the ship. Captain of all captains, most talented stand-up comedian who is sitting down so that you can understand him even though he does stand-up wearing Nikes, always correct, matching his pants that look like a pants that an intern would wear his first day at a job. Pop Pops, Morikwane! Yes! All right! 
Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, today you are in for a treat. Mm. Listen here, Wont. Yeah. <laughs> Were you putting your phone away? Yeah, I was getting ready for the exit. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, right. Just close the house from Aldo's show. Ah. Ducking in the chain. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you guys are in for a treat. Today, we sit with comedic legend. Yeah. One of the most talented comedic writers to ever come out of South Africa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about punchlines, mm. Cat Williams was talking about counting jokes and <laughs> counting laughs. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the undisputed champion of comedic punchlines every set he does. Facts. The king of dry humor. Facts. A legend in El Dorado Park. Facts. A Which one man who could have fallen victim Gangster receive. <laughs> jokes. 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 The jokes. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as they say, there is an elephant in the room. Please put your digital hands together. Which one is Help this us one? welcome our guest today. The one and only. Dylan Dylan Oliver. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you for, I was actually not gonna be a gangster, I was gonna be a journalist. <laughs> You're gonna be a journalist. <laughs> yeah, I went. I went. I went to Rosebank College for for. I was supposed to go for a year, but I went for two months. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Have you I, been to I, I le- my parents didn't know, so I was just like I left. I left Rosebank College, but I still wanted the spending money. So you pretended. So to I still pretended go. to go. <laughs> so you know how many Jason Statham movies I watched that year? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's not good, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <That's> go. <laughs> the guy, <laughs> the the guy in the cinema kept even at the, the last. He's like, "Hey, bro, we got no more movies for you." <laughs> I finished the whole roster. I finished That's everything, bro. I was at the small cinema at the last because you know you start off with like a blockbuster, yeah. like mm. a fast and furious. The next thing you know, you're there by Toy Story. Diary of a Mad Black Woman, because you know, start- <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I get more, bro. So I get more play Diary of a Mad Black Woman now. <laughs> Wait, wasn't Rosebank College in town? Yeah, that was my problem, bro. It wasn't in Rosebank. <laughs> I was like, what? And every Rosebank College is yeah. not in Rosebank, bro. <laughs> the one in Cape Town, the one in Durban, there's, there's not one. In the Rosebank. I've never seen the Rosebank College. <laughs> yeah, the Rosebank, bro. Dude, I saw an MGI also out of town. The M in MGI stands for Midrand Graduate Institute. And I'm like, why do they name it a specific My dog, at town? At least there's not... one MGI. The... <laughs> there's yeah. not one Rosebank Rose... College <laughs> in, in Rosebank. There's no, no. a union building, at least, you know. Wait, Rosebank. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 I'm saying there's a union building equivalent <laughs> of Midrand MIG, whatever. What? <laughs> oh, I see, I see, I see you what you mean. I mean, you mean like a main yeah, branch yeah. in oh, the place. The thing is, I want yes. yeah. the first guest to understand CT. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> Khala, but it's a story for another day. Another day. Uh, <laughs> this is my bro. This man, like, is one of the hardest working comics, like, Bro. Period, bro. Pound for pound. Nah, Dylan, yeah. bro. Yeah. There's gang people watching. Uh, they go by the name of the Cheese Gang. They're probably watching this right now thinking, wow, who is this handsome man <laughs> rocking the freshest J1s we've ever seen nah, on nah. the show? Please look at that camera, bro. Tell everyone who you are and what it is that you do. Uh, my name is Dylan Wellifant. I am a stand-up comedian, writer, and I've acted in one movie before. I've got one line thank you Riyad Musa for thinking about me oh were you in the last (laughs) bunny I was in material (laughs) 2 material Uh, I gave material I gave Joey Razdin and Riyad Musa directions I was like that's where they sell the hot dogs finish (laughs) and out how early did you have to wake up and and they made me wear Skulk's clothes bruh what? So you were <laughs> one of the I was like, there's a picture of myself in Skulk where it's like, I'm wearing Skulk's clothes. I was like, why do I need clothes for this? I'm just going to say, the Orox are so around the corner. The I had a t-shirt, but it's a, it's a Skulk t-shirt. It's the t-shirt version of Skulk's of jersey. jerseys. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so you, so can see, right? you can see it, right? You can see it. Did you audition? No, they just said um, they need someone to say a line. And they want me to come say the line. 
Just by answering the call. It's like, you're going to roll. <laughs> my brother, I was like, I've always, wanted to, Come through. I've always wanted to be in a movie. I was like, yeah, let me go. You see, this is why it's important to write down dreams in detail. Because Cause you'll say, I want to be in a movie. God will go, okay. Okay. Here's a lie. You didn't pray to be the main. You didn't pray to be the lead. You didn't pray to be the lead. You just wanted to be in I should have given a full, full. Yeah. Like, I, I want to start. Car and you're not specific. And then you get a quid. Yeah. No, uh-uh. You must be specific. I will pray to God. I'm fine. Not all our dreams are the same. Let me just say that. <laughs> That's my dream car. <laughs> 400 for petrol to get you. Come and back. Yes. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Talking about getting here, ladies and gentlemen, you're probably wondering what Yo. is happening right now. Ladies and gents, we promised you that we were going to do some renovations. And indeed, we have done them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the new look of popcorn and cheese. Proudly brought to you by Streaming Studios. Streaming Studios, sometimes it's good to go where you begin. Ladies and gentlemen, we are streaming live from a secret location here in Parkest, but a corner next to the Shell Garage. <laughs> Which one of Shell Garages are in Parkest? That's why it's a secret location. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But let's not guess things up. Uh, speaking of secret locations, we are seated comfortably as well. By uh, <laughs> you just realize it's not twenty fifty chairs. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. This is this is someone's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> this is budget. <laughs> Thank you for the furniture. How are How are Dylan, my dog, bra. <laughs> you answered the first question about like where where your comedic journey began, bro. I think I think you going to school for two months and realizing <laughs> you were you were studying journalism, yeah? studying journalism with yeah. the hopes of working for which publication in the future? Um, Prime Media. Okay. Oh no. So you had, you had big ambitions. You had big ambitions. Wow, I mean, like, <laughs> wait. I think wait. in a daily. <laughs> no, like uh, <laughs> I had, I had no hopes. My father told my father's a teacher, right? So my father mm. told me like after school, the it's only after school. After. <laughs> uh. <laughs> my father told me that after school, I am not gonna sit at home. I'm not you gonna sit at home. I'm, I have to do something. Then I was like, okay. Then if you wanna force, then I'll just go and do journalism for for the next three years. Uh -huh. And then I said, I'm going to go to Rosebank College. <clears throat> and it was in Bramfontein. And our dodgy looking campus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got robbed there from coming from there once before. Inside the school. No, not, not inside. Oh. The <laughs> On the bridge, because you have to cross the bridge, the oh, Mandela, Mandela bridge. bridge. Yeah. Ah, yeah, no, no. no <laughs> you didn't get robbed. You, you knew what was going to happen. Pretty you just, just went briefed. I think it's crime that stopped me from school. <laughs> let's go with crime. crime let's go. With, let's crime, crime. It's this country. <laughs> and then I, then I was like, nah, I'm not gonna. I, I wanted to do stand up. Yeah, I wanted to do stand up, but then obviously, because you have a father, a father that's my father's a teacher, so he was like, his child needs to study. Yeah, his child needs to study, and I was like, mm, I want to do stand up. My father, my father accepted it after three years. Hmm? <laughs> but but you but you <laughs> so take, three years, but your takeoff was quite quick in terms of like you did yeah you did a show and then you were on the Nando show two months from what, that. What happened was like because I entered that competition. I entered the which competition? The Nando's was? comedy competition at yeah. Parker's Comedy Club. And I'd only had done stand up once before I, I, ent I entered that competition. And I made it through in the first round with tips, tip shampoo. When you still had threads. Yeah. yeah, when you still had threads. Yeah. Shampooizer, yeah. And then I made it through and I made it to the final. And I went on first. And I killed it so hard that I won the competition <laughs> after so, like my fourth performance. Did you win like a family pack and like fun. I got perform at the Nando's comedy competition, bro. So we won like a, a, a family meal, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> a young family meal. Each of us got a family meal. Everyone in the house. One man. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the house. Chips or wages. My mother got the own. My father got his. 
Eh? Chips or wages? Chips. Chips so, bro, wait. How how long after you deciding, you know, I'm going to drop out of school, do you decide? Did you know going to school that um, you wanted to do stand-up? So, when you left high school, <clears throat> you, had, you had already been exposed to stand-up and you knew you wanted to do stand-up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I watched… I used to watch… We used to go watch… Um, um, th- I watched Trevor. I used to watch Trevor Noah on, on, on DVD first. Just because Comedy Festival… Mm, and, yeah, that's audio. the first time I saw him. Yeah. That's the first time I saw him. We also actually went to watch that show live. So my parents were like, my parents were like theater people. So they used to love going to market theater. That's and then dope, we'd, dope. we would go watch like Stuart Taylor. We would go watching Learn a Husband in school, bro. What? In school? You watched Learn a Husband in school? I was in school, bro. Because Learn a Husband came back again, I think. Yes, but it, I was, came, it came, came back, back again. Yeah, it came back afterwards. Yo, but I watched you be married? <laughs> <laughs> I watched it and I was like, yo, I... Because watch, I watched Technicolored before that. Technicolored was also a Stuart Taylor show. Technicolored. And, and, uh, Technicolored, yeah. So he used to make magic and comedy. Like, he make like a car disappear. And then comedy. So I used to go watch comedy a lot. Oh, that's and I was like, that's what I want to do. Uh, we used to watch, but my parents were just like, no, we're just enjoying this. We here for entertainment. We here for entertainment. I was like, I want to do this. And then I told my did my first open spot at Parker's Comedy Club. But this was before the this was before before the, the competition. Before the competition, yeah. right? You did your first open spot, and then you entered the Nando's Comedy Competition. Yeah, and then I entered. So I did my one spot at Parker's Comedy Club, and then I entered the Nando's com- Comedy Competition. Someone gave me Kiriboni Mulawutsi's number. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what you boy? <laughs> told me gave me Kiriboni Mulawutsi's number. Told me I should um, go perform at Ozone. Mm. And that's uh-huh. for that for that because before the com- the one the first round in the competition I had to go and do I just they told me no I must go practice this one set that I did now and yeah, I went to practice it, yeah. it at Ozone because I didn't know I always thought like with comedy you just do different jokes every time yeah, like yeah, every yeah, single time you come yeah, on stage yeah, you just yeah. do different jokes that's what I thought so then I went to Ozone yeah. <laughs> For those who don't know, also is in Mletani. The atmosphere was different. <laughs> hey, my dog. It's an upstairs room deep, deep in Soweto. Yeah. Mm. Um, it was on Wednesdays. Yeah, it was right. predominantly hosted by Jay Boogie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and 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 it was a free comedy gig. Yeah. So a free comedy gig is is a type of gig where you have to literally fight for the attention of the audience all the yeah. time. Yeah. I once did ozone and I got heckled by a blind guy. <laughs> a bro- a, a blind, and he was sitting in front. Isn't that blind guy <laughs> your birthday celebration in Cape Town? Or you guys were just teasing him? No, that guy was teasing because he was wearing sunglasses inside. Oh, yeah. But an actual blind guy was sitting in the front. Um, he had a table. He had his drinks. There was girls by his table. How? Oh. And ozone, ozone, <laughs> TT. <laughs> blind, damn man. Literally. <laughs> oh, bro, so, so the thing about ozone is that the, the MC would do like 30 minutes in between each comic, you know? Yeah, so yeah, by the yeah. time you get on stage, it's the next day. Yeah. 30 Literally. minutes. Bro. Literally, bro. You're booked Literally. today, you perform tomorrow. Tomorrow. I've what? performed at ozone on Thursday. Probably eight times. I performed two o'clock in the morning be? before. You see, Thursday. Two o'clock on a mo- in a Thursday morning, I performed where the guys, everybody's drunk. Drunk. Everybody's drunk. Drunk. Yeah. The guy, the one guy in, sit, was sitting in front of me, literally falling asleep while I'm performing, bruh. That's how drunk this person was. Just, mm. bruh. <laughs> bruh. That's okay. and that's 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 where Dylan basically had to do his second gig. But yeah, brother, can you imagine the pain of being heckled by a blind guy? <laughs> like at my, me, it was quarter to two that I went on. I went on. I did, <laughs> so early. Right. <laughs> I went on. I did my first joke. <laughs> did my first joke, and then that guy went, "Ha ha! Biz with Jay Pogan." And the thing about Ozone also is. <laughs> Was he pointing? Was he like faced in the right direction? He wasn't, right? And I didn't know he was blind because he wasn't wearing like glasses. Or so anything. you on stage, he's like, oh. Oh. he's like, oh man, let's oh. check books. I just thought he's, he's like wasted. So I start making fun of him. And then the girls at the table go, ah, ah he's blind. 
Damn. Then I'm like, ah, but he's being rude. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So did you roast him? I did. And the thing about Ozone also is the DJ brings you on to hype music, bro. Ah. The kind of music that you can't talk. You hear, yeah, all I, I do is win, win, <laughs> win, no matter what. And you're open And the mic. crowd goes, everybody, <laughs> hands go up. up. And you have to be like, DJ, can I oh, perform, man. please? And when, when the DJ stops the music, because Kamu was the DJ. DJ Kamu was the DJ. Kamu when he stops the music, you just you go, ah. That pressure must be crazy. So, bro, that's your second gig, right? Yeah. I'm I'm assuming you went earlier because you were still there. Yeah, I went earlier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How was that gig compared to your first? um, So, I went on earlier, and Ozone, when you go on earlier, it's empty. So, it was a bit more quiet. So, it's more quiet, it's not as rowdy. But, yeah, no, it was, I died. That you died. died. Yeah. yeah. It was nothing like my first one, my first open spot. My first open spot, um, I only did like for three minutes. I was supposed to do five, but I forgot the jokes. But the audience laughed and they liked it. But when I did Ozone, yeah, I was lost. I was lost. And for for I think for a good three weeks I did it. I only started okay, started understanding the audience after because I because I was doing it a lot afterwards. I was like, this is my around here because it's very close to where I stay I stay in Club Spirit West ah, so, so you're not far from so I'm not from very there. far from there yeah. so th- I was like this is my ground every Wednesday I'm gonna come in this, this so you didn't run away change. after you died right? because I, mm. I know a lot of people that's very uh, after, a character that's, I think that's the defining moment in comedy Yeah, is when you die <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah for sure. that, that's when you have to decide do I really want to do this yeah, and I was there with my father <laughs> 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 you and your father yeah, yeah. yeah. stay that long with you stay that long with you my dog he had no no I told you I'm gonna go back to Rosebank Rampontein College I was there with my. You know, you know, sorry to digress, just before, like, you know, it's crazy because you say your father didn't want you to do stand up in the yeah. beginning. But it's often your parents' uh, interests and, and, and it's their interests and, and, their, and their habits that often create passions for you. Like your parents might like certain things that you might start liking in your own different way. So the theater influence. Yeah, the yeah. theater yeah. influence and all this stuff. Makes and sense. then when you end up liking it, and then they. While doing that, they're still telling telling you to become an engineer. They're still telling you to become yeah. all this thing, but they they actually kind of prompting you to become something else, which is completely different to <laughs> what they say. Yeah, it's often the case. Crazy. Yeah, it's also often like because my father, my father's father, my grandfather was also a teacher, so he was almost forced into being. But my father's oh. father told him, "You're gonna be a teacher. You're gonna go." You were, my father wanted to be an accountant. My father was like, his grandfather, his father was like, no, you're going to be a teacher. So then now, it's, <laughs> you're going to be a teacher. That's, that's the place he's like, that's where you're going to get jobs. That's where people of color, yeah. that's where we got, that's the jobs that we got, you're going to go work for. So my father was the same, I guess, tried to be the same with me, but I was like, no, I'm going to tell jokes. So the jokes on him. Uh, <laughs> so now you took your father, you died. What did he say, bro? Ah, did... we just drove home quietly. <laughs> <laughs> we just drove home quietly. My father and my mom used to come to shows all the time. They used to drive me. I never had a car. I never. I, they used to take me to shows all the time. So I'd have tough gigs all the time. You know, comedies with when you when you see a comic perform at like a at like a big show you think that this is comedy but really yeah. comedy happens you? at the small the, shows at the small shows yeah. if I'm killing the small shows then the big shows are gonna be so easy yeah, yeah. because I made three people laugh you know how it is to make three people laugh bruh yeah. <laughs> less than <numbers. laughs> yeah. no 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 a small room is hard to make yeah, yeah. Mm. to connect with it's, it's hard because everyone's aware that this room is small they're like oh, <laughs> no one likes this and you can hear every, <laughs> you can hear every comment like at Kitchener's you can hear every comment yeah, yeah, yeah. that's like a sunbed yeah I died at Kitchener's once then I went straight to social media <laughs> <laughs> you did comedy at Kitchener's <laughs> no who was hosting bro, you my have first, to yeah. my first so the <laughs> you died at Kitchener's <laughs> <laughs> so my inter-agency um, Comedy Central Award I got that from the competition because we were working at Ogilvy and then yeah. Comedy Central, because they are a client, they said, yo, we're doing this thing yeah. and then we're having a comedy show. So everybody can enter. And then that's when I entered that. And then I won that out of 10 comics. Okay. We were, Donovan Goliath was my mentor and then Jason was other people, Napster, whatever. 
Hipster. Then after that. Yeah, no. I was waiting for who in this category. And my hipster was like, I know what kind of a show this is. Don Don was mine, then there was other comics between other people, yeah? So there's in a church too. Wait, what? Napster is a church comedian. Yeah, but let me finish my <laughs> sentence. So when I, when I won that competition, then Joe Parker was present, obviously. And okay. he's mm. like, yo, here's my card. Let's try to see if this is something you're going to run with. I said, I went, spoke to Don. Don was like, okay, keep this. Like all the structures, the rule of three, all that stuff. Then I did Parker's. That was my first open, open uh, slot, five open minutes. Spot, yeah. I did Parker's. Then I did Napster's birthday comp- celebration. Yeah. Then I did Kitchener's. And then social media. How bad was that death that you never came back? <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It was like, Ish. Ish. and I was explaining this. My challenge with comedy was reading the crowd, time slots, who you after, who you before, time limit. Mm. Yeah. Inverse all these things to social media. My <clears throat> audience, my concept, my time, my posting. my. I just took the same concept of comedy and ran with it on social media because I felt like the traveling to these gigs and the admin here was more than what my phone can provide for me. And then that's how I ended up like leaving that specific space like that. We don't blame him, he's a robot. <laughs> AI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, traveling to gigs traveling to gigs can be like one of the yeah. hardest things, bro. Like I remember like I used to take a taxi to after my parents no longer took me to gigs. They got you home. They were like this. They were, like, what what you now? They, they, they were like, you know <laughs> what? I was doing okay. I could at least afford a taxi. Right? And they, <laughs> well, no, I could. I I just took a taxi because I found the route of the taxi. Yeah. And I only had taxi fare that day, bruh. Yeah. And you know, I, I don't, so a lot of people think that I speak Zulu. Yeah. Like yeah, they yeah. All, a lot of people think they come up to me. And so the taxi driver, hmm? so the taxi driver, we were sitting in the taxi, <laughs> bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It's us. I know, right? <laughs> we already died. Like, <laughs> we are already Zulu. done. <laughs> I can see the drive already. <laughs> we are Fibana. <laughs> you know, the last one. <laughs> you mean to park us? You didn't look for the numbers. Now, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to So, I was on my way to Wish. On my way to Wish. You remember Wish? Wish was in Melville. Wish was in Melville. That's yeah. where the old poppers used to be until. And the shots were fired. Right, so. Uh, Literally. <laughs> right, then um, I took the wrong taxi. And I only with had your taxi. Last man, with my last money, bro. Mm. I got off close to Krista. Yo. Because I was like, where are we now? I don't remember us taking this route. Because I remember the one, it's almost on your way to Melville, but there's another turn it took. I was like, hey, maybe this guy's taking a different turn. I don't know. It still looks like Melville. <laughs> After a while, I'm like, no, man. This yes. car, this is not Melville. This is, this is, then I see Emerentia. I'm like, yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've gone too far. And yeah. I'm like, hey, where? I asked the lady next to me, um, where are we now? She's like, like she replies to me in Zulu. Hey, sis, sis, humble, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like, no, I need to go to Melville. He's like, oh, the taxi driver asked if there's Melville people. I was like, oh, that's what the taxi driver asked earlier in the drive. I was about to so it's probably ask. those taxis where if you know the route, fade it. But yeah. if there isn't someone going that way, he's going to ask. And if there's no one, yeah. like that was the most confusing thing. Yeah, if so he asked. speak up, he's going to take a different route. Yeah, he's going to take a different route. So no, but he did yeah. ask. But <laughs> he did ask and I didn't understand. <laughs> yes. So I got off and I walked, bruh. You. From Cresta. <laughs> from Rambert to Melville. <laughs> I walked, from bruh. From Cresta to... Straight up that road, bruh. I and walked. It's, and it's uphill. I'm uphill. scared, bruh. I'm nervous. Because it's also getting evening. It's becoming Talk, evening, there's a, there's a graveyard. There's a graveyard, yeah, yeah. bruh. You walk past the graveyard. I walk past the graveyard, bruh. It's a long drive past. How long is the walk past? <laughs> bruh, I was... You know, I walked. I walked and I couldn't, st- yeah, I was like, this is no, I'm not getting here. I don't have, I can't message anybody. There's nothing. There's nothing I can, only, only thing I can do right now is walk. walk. And I walked, bro, and I got to wish and I was thirsty, bro. Yo, <laughs> yo I was thirsty. <laughs> yo, and I'm like, and this lady's asking me, do I want something? I'm like, no, I'm fine. It's fine. 
I don't even know about it to buy anything. Luckily, another comic by the name of Yuri Kane Kiesa came. I was like, bra, you don't know, I've walked almost from Cresta. You don't know how thirsty I am right now. Um, will you please buy me something? I'll ask yo. my father when he fetches me later to give you the money yo. for uh, that thing, bra. <laughs> At a humble beginning. Oh, <laughs> my dog. Yo. And then I died that night. <laughs> 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 it's like, I didn't kill it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, welcome to that story. Like, you know, there was no happy ending to that story. Dark channel, there's still darkness. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's I mean, so yeah. does that happen? A, does it happen a lot when people confuse you for a black person? Um, yeah, they do. They they always do. But I, I like I always had this joke where I was like, "Hey, these um, black people always come up to me and speak to me in Zulu, and they must be thinking, wow, he's such a good listener.' Because <laughs> you're not, because you're not responding. I'm just like, yeah. no, but you look like a. I, I respond, bro. I just go, oh, I laugh, and they're just like, yeah. It looks like they know what. Like it's almost like when they speak to me, like they know what my response must be. I'm just, yeah. I just giggle for the response. Or I just like, yeah, I'm away. <laughs> <laughs> away. We'll give it away. Yeah. And what, so, okay, the, let's let's address the elephant in the room. Holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, in the colored community, right? Yeah. And I know it, like growing, growing up in Soweto, we had, there was Soweto and then there was Noor Gesig, yeah. right? And then my mom actually teaches around uh, Club Spread site around Paul Musaka. Oh, yeah? So, and then that site is Eldorado Park or yeah. not. Right? So, from back in my day, I remember that the people on the North Sikh side, there was less fair colored people. Yeah. So, we, the, I knew that the darker version of the colored, <laughs> uh, of the colored community <laughs> really? was more in North Sikh. And the fairer, this was when I was young, right? Okay. Like early 90s. <laughs> and the fairer colored people lived in El Dorado Park. And my, or, or me and my friends and everyone that grew, grew up around that area, we always assumed that the colored people from North Kassel were just black people. Okay. I see, I see, right? I see, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. As kids, we didn't understand the dynamic that, oh, yeah. that there's different shades of colored. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you think, do you think that's, I mean, do you think that's probably the reason why a lot of people will look at you immediately and assume, oh no, you must fall into the black category or the African category? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I think also, I think the audience, even when I tell people on my videos or in my content about me being colored, people in the comment section are telling me, no, but I just... <laughs> just so, accept yourself. Just accept yourself. <laughs> <laughs> be true to who so you are. Just, just be who you are. Hey, you colored, bro. Oh, you be colored, bro. You Someone are. told me I have a fake colored accent. <laughs> 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 a fake colored accent, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's, uh, who's this bra trying to be Cape Townian? <laughs> <laughs> That's not even Cape Townian colored accent. <laughs> But it's such a weird, like we have such weird identity crises between all these. Yeah, whoa. Non white, which one is this one? Um, racist, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, between, no, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely no, saying, right. So, so there's there's always a, a battle of of color and then there's a battle of shade, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So, like, even in the co- Indian community, there's there's the very dark Indian people and the, light. And the very light Indians, and then they they class themselves according to that. Yeah, I, um, and and that happens. Yeah, in the color community, colorism, colorism is Ooh. everywhere, right? So colorism mm. is in the color community where yeah, it's yeah. like you, you, I am of a darker, darker complexion. So you have colored people. Go ask you if you have to ask a dark colored person their nickname. Yeah, oh. bro, I, I know can't say nickname. It. It's the king. Oh. <laughs> dark zor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bro. Like, see, there's a bro that a colored guy. They used to call him. He was darker than the other colored guys. Mm. They used to call him the K word. Yeah, like yeah. off the bat, and everybody <laughs> knows it. Friendly guy. It's just the gay, the K guy. It's just him. Which one is this one? Um, I'm I'm not joking. In Lubuakhong? No. 
Uh, yeah, south, obviously. In the south. Yeah. Homo is just black people yeah, and colored. That is not an uncommon nickname amongst colored people. Really? For a dark colored. Yeah. I just remember with, 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 with my colored friends growing up, they, they, the concern about the fair skin colored mm-hmm. crowd was they didn't want to mix with the darker skin colored crowd in case their kids grew up to have. Yeah, uh, I've, I've had that conversation in the taxi before. Yeah. Of now having <laughs> the hair like mine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want hair like the guy here behind me. <laughs> 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 yeah. What the? <laughs> yeah. We see it all the time. Get, get, get you stressed, boy. <laughs> In a taxi. In a taxi, right? Ah, that is actually crazy. Yo, bro. Yo, bro. When so, like, when yeah. do you think we we're gonna put an end to this thing? Do you think it will ever end? Because I was I was actually watching a a, a clip or a, from a doc or something in Cape Town. And it was a, an old colored auntie, and she was like, she doesn't care um, if if black people have are now in a position where they're educated and they're making money. We were just taught not to like them, so there's it, nothing I can do. I, I guess you, we're gonna yeah. have to wait for for natural selection. We're gonna have to wait for them to die the older people to die <laughs> I think that's the only way that's the only way you can get like an old person to have you ever said to the old person bro yeah, yeah, yeah. the old person you can't change they, they bro. Are, just, <laughs> you can't change in their, ways. <laughs> their mind is fixed bro Fulma Singer is the best footballer ever <laughs> <laughs> that's just how the game is now <laughs> who cares about Messi have you seen but do, you, do you think do you think um, growing up with those sort of um, how do I say it with those issues that you had to encounter, do you think it's it's different now with the kids today? Um, <clears throat> I guess the younger kids, because now I think colored people are also no longer they go to the schools where multiracial schools. Mm. So, like my cousin's child, yeah, my cousin's child, he goes to a, a private school. First week, different accent. First week, mm-hmm. his whole life, grade eight. First week, different accent. Comes the so, honor, Uncle Dill. <laughs> Jeeps. It's like, yeah, why are you talking? <laughs> like, why are you talking like this? I'm like, hey, Tabo talks like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not even another white person. Not a black It's time, It's time. It's time. It's time to be one now. <laughs> yeah, all right. And that's and that's what I love about where we at, uh, yeah. with the youth, especially of, of our country, right? Is the kids of today, bro, like they they don't have the same issues that the older people had. You know, we we were kind of like part of the first generation that actually got to go to multiracial, multiracial and and interact Inter-act, with different yeah. Yeah. you know. And even then, like our parents would be like, Okay, it's cool that you have those friends, but yeah. You know, we're like this and they like that. Mm. You know, you know what I mean? But I think now we live in an era where Yeah, I think like I've met I met my first I met <laughs> I acted like it's mine. I met a white person for the first time when <laughs> I was twenty two. <laughs> like like just know a white person. Because I I grew up in the Aldos. I stayed in the Aldos. Went to school in the I, I've seen I mean I've seen them. <laughs> We've gone to the malls and stuff, but I didn't know any white person. I didn't mm. know a white person except that one Light skin colored bra in a township. You know, well, they, 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 call, they call him Bura. <laughs> Bura, yeah. <laughs> that's, we had a Bura at Bondi. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the whitest person I knew. <laughs> that's the whitest person. That's who, I, who Dimbi? Oh. Oh. Which one is this one? Oh, Bura. Sorry. Sorry. Dimbi. Sorry. Dimbi. <laughs> him and a Dimbi, they did something to him the other day as to his face. He got beaten up. Yeah. Wait, you got uh, such a up? friendly guy, dog. Yeah. I wonder what you happened. got beaten up. I know, I know, Titi cares about Timpi so much. Yo, bro, I do. Yeah. Timpi's from your cousin. Eh? Timpi's from my. Actually, he's actually from where I stay. Even Timpi's from close by. Wait, West. guys, but why did they beat him up? Um, I don't know, cause they had a loud party, and that uncle just came to beat him up. I, the uncle from next door, came to beat him up. Not from also, you got house, disciplined. I no, I don't know. I don't know. I. I vaguely read the article also. <laughs> there was an article. <laughs> yeah, there was an article in the Daily in the Daily Sun about. Um, so was he like bruised? Yeah, I he, saw he was him, bruised. I he was in bad status. I saw him in a hospital picture. In a hospital. Yeah, by Barra. Yeah. Mm. 
Eh, hey, Katy, this thing was that serious. He was, yeah, there, with, he was there with Dr. Matthew. Uh-uh. Was, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just take your temperature, Dimps. I've got to put this thermometer somewhere, okay? Just turn around. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next, deliverly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, yo. <laughs> My dog. Can't take you guys anyway. Ah, uh, but listen. So you met your first white person at 22. Um, that's crazy. Actually. That's 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 insane. Like to 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 think because you're not that old, bro. How old are you? I am 33. 33. Yeah. Right. So 11 years, years ago. ago. Yeah, I met my first white person. Kevin uh, Kelly. Con- <laughs> <laughs> Jared yeah, Con- I want like, if, if, if Kevin Kelly was my first white person, I'll take that. Yeah, that was first. Because he's white. very black. My first white person was Joe Buck. <laughs> yo, 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 I yo, went yo, 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 One of the ancestors. <laughs> yeah, it, it hey, was weird. Because, it, it was weird because, you know, because I... Where we come from, we call older people uncles and aunties, bro. Yeah. yeah. And now, yo, I'm calling Joe Parker Joe, bro. Yo, you know how weird it felt for Culture a long shit, time. Man. I couldn't yeah. call him yeah. Joe, bro. I was like, hey, uncle. Sh- Joe. And you want to say, I'm not call me Joe. <laughs> yeah, he's like, call me Joe. I'm like, hey, I don't know, man. I, I've never called. I never call someone older than me. Also, imagine your parents are name, taking bro. you to the kid. And, and you, you, you get the, uh, mom, dad, this is Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We raised this is Uncle Bus Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Bus Joe. <laughs> bro, can, can I ask the your parents, bro, like from yeah. them taking you because you didn't have a car and showing you support at the beginning stages to now, Doug, like, how does that feel for you and what is their response to your success now? Um, my, my parents are quite proud of my success. My, my father and my mom used to take me to gigs all the time, like every single gig. Then even Robbie used to say, yeah, tell them to go, out of play, to go places without your parents. <laughs> like, um, so my father used to take me and then... When I when I did my first paid gig, so I did my first paid gig at Blues Room, right? Oh, in Santon, yes. In Santon, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, did my first paid gig after I did that Nando's comedy competition. <laughs> and then we... Five And gig. then I was... The, huh? Five gig. I got 500, right? Yeah. 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 I was, yeah. yeah. I got into that car, bro. It was like McDonald's, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you get McDonald's. <laughs> you get McDonald's. <laughs> Everybody's getting McDonald's. <laughs> Plus, there was a time, I think that day was the day my parents stopped fighting about me doing, not doing something yeah about yeah. doing something else that day because they're seeing the money bro. yeah they saw the money and i was on there with like Luis Ogola and Eugene, trevor noah yeah. oh Luis Ogola, trevor noah and i think darren moore was hosting right so my parents were like yo this guy is performing with the OG, with the, the with the kings right yeah, yeah, <laughs> with the kings yeah. of comedy right so they ne- they stopped badgering me then then it was like when's the next gig <laughs> more like they were more interested Looking now they were like to... very interested in hey we must we must plan for travel and this and whatever mm. so then and then the accolades more accolades started coming in my mom bro my mom is i met someone my mom passed away last year mm. i Sorry met someone that, you know, condolences bro i met someone a week ago, the mm-hmm. guy at the in at the internet cafe, the the, one, the only in- internet cafe is the left. Do you know about the internet cafes? <laughs> what are you doing at the internet cafe? I went I went to print something, right? Oh. <laughs> I don't have a print. <laughs> don't you wait to use the internet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I went. Our is so good. It's scamming people. Internet cafe. Uh, internet. Yeah. So I met someone there. She's like, oh, you Dylan Oliphant. I was at your house before. Your mom showed me your awards. <laughs> I was like, yo, I don't know that person, nothing. My mom just showed a random stranger. That's <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. Uh, My mom asking for directions. <laughs> uh, let's do it. Sorry, mommy. Uh, you know, let's do it. Come, come inside. Second, come come see something. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so, that's so dope. That's so dope, bro. Yo. Ah, that's, that's, that's beautiful. Bro. And you talk yeah. about your, I mean, you talk about your whole experiences in general, especially like, you know, there's because you, your your generation is like a big, big brother to us because we saw you guys, uh, like killing it and buying shoes for the first time. You know, like 
<laughs> like you know, like you know, like you know, as a comedian, you know, about God. God. that's why I was buying shoes. But, but as a co- as comics, so you walk the other shoes finished. The mileage, the souls, those fans yeah. were dead after that. Because <laughs> as comedians, bro, we spend so much time around the same people yeah. that you pretty much know all their clothes. You know, yeah. yeah. So like you know the. Yeah. Big short clothes, you know the, you know the small short clothes. Like, yeah, small short clothes. Kumba's wearing that jacket. Yeah, so now, <laughs> so as comedians, it's, uh, yeah, for a lot of times, Kumba used to was only wearing head. that Ferrari shirt. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh. For a long, long time, I was like, hey, the he's doing entire. a big show tonight <laughs> when he's wearing that shirt. I was like, hey, this guy's doing the things. Yeah, <laughs> Yo, bro. So, you, you, so as a comedian, right, if you're in the circuit, it's very easy to see if someone is starting to do well. Because you see it at the, at the, at the shows, you're like, eh, this bro like has different... In every different. industry. Yeah? In every industry. Yeah, like, but like... in an Uber, who's coming in a bus? Who's, oh, yeah. Yeah, but for us, it's small things like a T-shirt. Because you, know, you can hear our, our payment margin started 500. <laughs> so, so you start to see how other people are, are starting to do well. And that kind of inspires you to 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 want to become better or to do to move in a, in a different way. Like I remember when the Goliaths were like <laughs> popping and they became like a big, 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 big brand. Like we were around like the ones that are getting the small gigs that they used to turn down and stuff like that. But so I'm saying like, it's nice. Okay. I, don't, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, but I'm saying so. <laughs> My dog, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I said it in what I was saying. I probably said what I was trying to say. All I'm saying is that you guys were, were do you still, like, yeah, there is what I was Which trying to say. Which one is this Do you still, mm-hmm. uh, you use a lot of like, your personal life in this thing and you talked about your mom. Uh, uh, what's wrong, bro? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a new year but the same seat. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Streaming studio. How is that, bro? Like, <laughs> 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 like talking about stuff that's that personal, man, you know? Because you used to do like one-liners and now you are talking a lot more personal stuff. I know it's always been personal but how does the how is that? Wait, be, before before we get into Titi's <laughs> five page question, <laughs> who, who, who do you who do you think between your parents you get your humor from? Um, I get it from my mom. My mom could laugh, bruh. My mom could laugh, and she could like. And if and if you do something wrong, yo, she'd laugh at you, bruh. Like you say a word wrong, you say like whatever word. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, uh, and she's on you. Yeah, like a young mistake or slip up. Like she would like go at the pastor, bruh. Like go after church with the other pastor. Hey, it's, How? Not, it's not Pacific. <laughs> and then start laughing at you. <laughs> start <laughs> laughing, bro. She didn't care, bro. <laughs> That's, so That's funny. Actually. So, so now to to Titi's point, right? When we when you started doing comedy, and I think that's such a beautiful question, Titi. When you started doing comedy, you were just doing one liners, bro, yeah. right? And over time, especially now, like most recently, we got to watch you at destroy Sun- at Sunbed when opening. you were opening for oh, Trevor. No, <clears throat> good friend of ours here at the show, Trevor. Can't <clears throat> wait to have you here in the same seat as Dylan, right here at Streaming Studios. Streaming Studios, right here in Pakistan, where studios <laughs> should be. Uh, Dylan, my brother, <laughs> you have now started inserting more of your life, more of yourself into your humor. So how would you say your comedy was in the beginning versus how it is now and what's influenced that sort of trajectory and that direction? Well, in the beginning, I used to do just like one-liners. Yeah. Just set up, punchline, set up, punchline, and it's the whole set through. But what I find is with one-liners, people get tired of it, like middle in the set, they like, it's almost like they they know the machinations of what is like, oh, he's going to say this and it's going to go like mm. this, right? It's going to up. It's almost and like, sometimes it would also like, take them a while to catch that rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they catch the rhythm. <clears throat> and also, there's only so much you can talk about. Like if you talk about, if it's one-liners, then you have to think about things outside of yourself all the time, mm. you know? But when it's just me, bro, it's like, hey, I was driving yesterday. Something happened. Mm. This is what it did. And then... Later on, so I guess the one-liners did help with me being able to write jokes. 
You yeah. know, because that's like you know, like you know, exercise. To, <laughs> you know how to exercise. You know how to do it. You set up punchline. Ka, 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 you get where the audiences want. And then later on, I was just like, hey, if I really want to engage an audience, if I want to be doing one man's or hour shows, I'm gonna have to give them something more. People are gonna have to come. I think as a stand-up comic, we almost forget it. People don't just come and watch jokes. Yes. It's not. I think we don't. They don't just come and watch jokes. They coming yeah. to watch their favorite act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to be an act. act. You don't have, you don't just come there. Otherwise, they would have just read a joke on 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 in Twitter the U on Facebook. Or, eh? In that's the U, what, in the U magazine. Read, in the East Coast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I realized that. So as a performer, I have to be complete. Mm, both I have to be complete. And I want to do. And I want to tell people more about myself and what I feel or what I think. And one liners were almost holding me back. I think that format that format works for your social media because I was first exposed to you on your social media, like yeah. your Facebook videos blow up. Oh <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It does work, yeah, because it's also like one minute, just quick, In, quick, out, quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it works proper. Like even like even the whenever I post old stand up clips, they do like really well because it's so short form. People get it. It's it doesn't. You don't need. We don't need a. We don't need. A whole set up, set up story, you know, yeah. people get tired. They're like, yo, this guy's been setting up this joke, even if the punchline is fire, fire. But with my with my jokes, it's just like, hey, we can have a 20 second clip and have a laugh. Oh, okay. And yeah. then and then who's this man? Um, Trevor. You recently did his show, right? Yeah. But that wasn't the first time you toured with him. No, I, I toured with him. I did 2012 was the first time at uh, Here. 2012. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, but at least it's after. <laughs> yeah, it was after World Cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 2012. How long? How long after your Nando's extravaganza? It was. It was uh, two years after. So Dog, imagine, bro. Two right years. Up, right two years Nando's into comedy, comedy yeah. and you're already doing Trevor Noah tour. Because I had won um, newcomer at the Comics Choice Awards that same year too. Yo. So, mm. then, so you then, won it one year in. I won it two years in 2010 to 2012. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I won the Comics Choice Newcomer of the Year that year. And then I opened for Trevor in Pretoria. Initially, they never had an opening act for Pretoria. So they were like, let's try me. And I went and I did Pretoria. I did well there. And Trevor was like, yeah, come do Lyric with me. Opportunity means preparation. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we did like Love. Lyric. We did Lyric for like 30 nights. 30 nights? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's <laughs> thirty nice. nine, bro. We did it like for th- we did a whole month. That's a whole yeah, month. Man. Yeah. Even Saturdays, Saturdays, we, Saturdays and Sundays, we do two shows. Ah, what? Yeah. Less than twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Trevor was already a superstar, a South African superstar. The guy was. We did lyric night after night after night. I was there from Yo. cooking. Yo, cooking. Yeah. 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 Telling. Night after night, 30 nights in a row, you're doing the lyric, money's coming in. It's clearly more than the five clipper. <laughs> yeah. You're buying McDonald's every day for mom and dad. <laughs> but dad is still pulling up in his Corolla. It was a Corolla, no? <laughs> no, it was a... Uh... Oh, yeah, it might have been a Corolla. Yeah, a Corolla. At that time, yeah, 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 at the time yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a Corolla. He's pulling up in his Corolla, bro, picking you up. That's so dope. Mm-hmm. Why, at that point, why don't you buy a car, bro? Um, because I, I've always had, I've had a, a dream car and my dream car wasn't within reach. My dream car was a BMW 1 series, right? Which yeah. I recently got, as you said. Celebrating success. Yeah. <laughs> so, and at that time I was like, hey, if I don't get a 1 series, I don't want other cars. <laughs> I don't want other cars. <laughs> so that's the I, don't, boom. I don't want other cars. Why not get the car that, that I've You've been dreaming, that I've been about, dreaming yeah. about, you know? And then I got the car and then I got hate for my car too, bro. Hate? You got yeah. hate? I got hate for my car, bro. People were telling me I shouldn't buy a BMW when I could be feeding the kids, bro. What kids? How many kids what do you have, kids? Dylan? I have no kids. So whose kids are you talking about? <laughs> I have no kids. Um, I um, then I was like, "Yo, bro, West Bank won't finance 
all these kids. <laughs> Wait. Ah. <laughs> you got hate for buying a car. Yeah, you and, hate for and buying a car, dog. Guys, it's, you get hate for anything good it, you do. It was from a, and it wasn't from color because color people and black people, people of color, we know what it's like when you get a car, bro. That's what we celebrate when yes. you have a car, bro. Yeah. But we live far, bro. The township is far from, from, from everywhere else, right? And you know, when you don't come from generational wealth, a car is only, you can only work for it. Mm. You can only work for it. Yeah. And then I got my car. But this person hated saying that it's a, it's a, well, I could have bought, I'm spending money on a BMW, I could have fed the kids. And this is a white person oh, <laughs> telling me this, right? I was like, yeah, this is crazy. And then I posted it on Twitter and everyone was started giving me, um, Props. saying nice things, yeah. saying nice things about, uh, and, and saying this guy is crazy. Now I have a BMW 118, right? And then someone come and say, why is he acting like this for a 118? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I was like, ah, 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 whose side are you on now? <laughs> I thought you guys are on my side. No one's now, ever safe on that now platform. Now I feel bad about my 118. <laughs> no one's ever safe on that That's platform. why you got another one. <laughs> yeah. You got a, 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 a new one. I got a newer one than the one, than the one before, yeah. Aish, uh, hallelujah. <laughs> my dogs. Yeah. Or like I'm a show that white person. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know what you know what I admire about about that, right? Is that you stuck to your guns, you had a dream, you had a vision, and you were like, I'm not gonna compromise. This is what yeah. I want, you yeah. know. You weren't like, ah, let me find a test now for the meantime, put rims and sound no. up. Uh, 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 no uh, man, you were like, call it now test, rims and sound. Uh, I had a test uh, with rims sound and a drop. <laughs> but you were like a colored boy. <laughs> 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 At school, like you must see this man with his high school friends, bro. They don't speak in our dialect. <laughs> <laughs> but a dos. Yeah, no, no. So in the meantime, you just bought gang shoes, bro, because you're a proper sneakerhead. Yeah, I bought. Um, I went to stand in line, bro. I stood in line for Yeezys. I'm a big Kanye fan, so when Yeezys came out, I was like, yo, I must wear the sneakers that Kanye drives in. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking at sneakers if it's the light, if it's the, the last thing I do. Yo, bro. Yeah, dope. You know, you know what, what, what's dope, man. For me, I think as a comic, Dylan has been watching you grow, man. You've got this. You've got a similar story to Dave Chappelle in the sense that your parents used to take you to gigs, right? Yeah. And literally, mom and dad would be there all the time. Even when they stopped taking you to gigs, dad would come and pick you up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and what I'm what I'm so glad is that in the time that you had with your mom, she got to see you rise. Yeah. You know, she got to see you win Comics Choice Awards, mm -hmm. tour tour the country with Trevor yeah. Noah, bruh. Uh, you know, and not yeah. just Trevor, but to do <coughs> big shows and to still do your one man show, yeah. right? Uh, there's a the elephant in the room. There's an elephant in the room. Yeah. The elephant in the room. An elephant's been there. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bruh, like, dog, you know, Dylan, bruh, Dylan does so many stuff, dog, like, and he's so big. If you look at the career, and people don't give him the flowers, dog. No, they don't, bruh. And that's, and that's why we wanted to have you here, my dog, is to yeah. say, you know, you've carved your own path in comedy, yep. right? Definitely. You're a, you're, to us, Right, the people in comedy, you're a legend, bro. No, yeah. You're a legend. To people like Robot, they're like, yeah, this guy's wasting his time on stage. He must just make TikToks. <laughs> <laughs> but for us, you're a legend, bro. And and I know where mom is, bro. She's extremely proud of you. She was proud of you when she was here. She's extremely proud of you where she's at, bro. We just want to know, for people out there who are in your position, right? Um, youngsters from the township, who had a dream, what advice do you have for them in terms of starting up in comedy? Because there's people watching now, they're like, how, how do I start? How do I get my edge in comedy? How, what's, what are, what are the, some, of the, some of the daily practices that you put into your craft? Because we don't have a school for this, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> so, firstly, I speak to Emil. <laughs> <laughs> He means a fifteen, a fifteen year old. No, no, he's a he's, a, he's the oldest newcomer in comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got no. fifteen years experience. He runs, he runs. Uh, so what I do is I, 
He runs a sport called Sips Comedy on a Monday. Yeah. For any new comic, they should go there. Okay. Even if they just go there on one Monday, check it out. And then ask for a spot for the next. Ask for a spot for the next, right? Yeah, yeah. And then obviously the bioscope, but the bioscope, you just go watch also again, right? Yeah. They yeah. just go watch. And hopefully, they'll, if they're good enough later on, get a spot at the bioscope. But also, I've, I, with my comedy, I, I'm, I'm very focused on the craft of comedy. Yeah, yeah. Like I sit and I write and I'm, I'm always thinking comedy. So the only way to do comedy is by doing comedy. Yeah. Alone, the only way to get better. Yeah. You can't sit and say, oh, I want to do that. You can't even put on a camera and say and like, just, and think it's the same as as performing in front of a live audience. Yeah. Because performing in front of a live audience is also a bit different in the fact that the room, the context of the room needs to be taken into place, right? There's drunk people, there's, there's, there's loud people, yeah. there's, there's this person here. Yeah, you know, you've performed, have you performed to a person sitting in front and they don't laugh? Let's go take Paul again. <laughs> <laughs> Just one person. Everybody's killing themselves yeah. in the room, but that one person mm, is like... That's the guy I focus on. <laughs> I always, me, I always focus on the people who are not laughing. That, that, I think, yeah, that person, that, and that's the person who will come up to you after the show to tell you how amazing you are. <laughs> like, yeah. Nigga, you don't even laugh that, once. <laughs> don't you think those people are like connected to a different realm of the set? <laughs> but soon you uh, why not? There's, there's people who can watch a show and appreciate the performance quality. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think we also need to differentiate. Yeah. Not everyone has to kill themselves. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And then with regards to jokes and, and joke theft, has anyone ever stolen any of your material? And, and what did you do, bro? Because there was an era where People were chopping each other. <laughs> uh, no one, I don't think anyone has ever stolen my material unless there's a comic, other comic from Eldos. <laughs> are you there? I know I'm a guy from Eldo, Raru with Park. threads. <laughs> they were like, Chris Forrest, why are you saying this? <laughs> <laughs> Chris Forrest, why are you saying from Eldos, bro? <laughs> and bro, in terms of the infrastructure of comedy, do you, do you think we're in a good place in South Africa right now? Um, and I'll speak to Joburg before I say all of South Africa. Yeah. Um, do you feel like do you feel like we're we're in a good place or do we still need to do more for the for the infrastructure of our industry? I think that the pandemic really hit the industry hard. Yeah. And we are Joburg especially. I think Joburg is still recovering. Also, um I think Joburg comedy right now is in a tough place. Yeah. But I think it's all just about um all the comedians coming again together. Because right now we only have we have, we have Bioscope where you actually see the comics, the mm. working comics, the mm. comics that are getting paid. But other than that, I can't see any other gigs where, like SIPs, for instance, I'm talking about weekly gigs. Mm. Other than, there's only newcomers. So it's basically just open spots mm. starting their own shows. And yep. you know, we all know what open mics are. Open mics are not good yet. They're not mm. good enough yet. Mm -hmm. So we still have a lot of We've got the rebuilding to do, I think. Yeah. The Joba comedy scene. Yeah. It's definitely like, got. And I saw it at like the newcomer showcase. The, the Cape Town X. The Cape on Town fire. X were on fire. But that's what stage time is. Yeah. I, I look for I look for because I like doing open spots, right? I I'm I'm on the scene. I'm yeah. I'll I'll be there on a Tuesday and there's 10 people. I like I'm working on my craft, so I need to be there working on the craft. So when I've seen the acts and I've seen the, the Cape Town acts, they're doing three gigs a night. Mm. And the Joburg acts, when you saw them in, at, and you're like, okay, this is clearly people who has been jumping. Because when you jump, it shows on the field. Right? Exactly. It shows on Practice the field. Perfect. Yeah. It shows on the field. Yeah, and now here yeah, in Joburg, our new guys are jumping once or twice a week. Mm. Whereas we used to have Parkers, we used to have Goliath Comedy Club, Melville Comedy mm. Club, Poppies. We had gigs for days, no, lighthouse, kitchen. Sundays, yeah. kitchen yeah. Now we only have Bioscope Sundays and Sundays. Sips on a Monday. Bioscope Sundays. Hey, and on that sad note. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, but I think we can come back. Eh? We can, we can. I, I, oh, I, yeah. I honestly believe in, in Johannesburg comedy. I honestly believe in Johannesburg comedy. I feel like, I feel like especially, and Dylan is telling the truth, but Dylan is one of the big guys or the one of the older guys in comedy that will come to the gigs to make people feel like, yeah, I performed with Dylan only fun. Like I remember when I was running Kitcheners, people would come, yo, you know who I performed with today? <laughs> <laughs> Dylan only fun. I'm like, yeah, I booked the show, bro. <laughs> and then, 
And it, and and but there's no excitement like that for something like sips. Every now and again, you might not find anyone there. You know, people kissing while you're performing. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> I yeah, think also, I mean, it's also and lambs are like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's five audience members. Two are kissing. <laughs> what are you gonna do, bro? Just, <laughs> Uh, if you would like to see people hitting a lamza and uh, enjoying comedy please make sure you check out Sips Comedy every Monday yeah. at uh, uh, Melville in Melville in Melville yeah. if you want to do comedy if yeah. you want to do comedy uh, Dylan bro you know what it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure having you here bro um, honestly one of my favorite comedians of all time that, that, that South Africa has ever Fits. produced honestly honestly speaking um, the last show I saw you do, I mean, I, I mean, I, I seen you at uh, at the smaller shows after, but what you did at Trevor's show yeah. mm. cannot be undone. Yeah, I don't. Thank like you, yeah. you literally controlled that room. And right. and what I love with 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 your comedy growth is, you made us laugh, you made us think, and you invited us into your world. You yeah. know, you you let us know about your pain, yeah. what you've got, what you'd gone through. And and I think through your comedy you are you you're able to heal, and you are able to help us heal yep. people in the audience who might have been in the similar situation, situation as yours. <laughs> so, yo man, thank you for for putting your heart in your talent, bro. Yeah, you know, I, I it's an honor to call you call you a comedy brother. Yeah, and I want to say that over the years, I feel like a lot of people might have slept on you, Dylan, bro. Oh, gang people might have slept on, you. gang, gang. Yeah. At popcorn and cheese, we never, we never sleep on you, my dog. <laughs> so, as a token of appreciation from us people from the south, we want to say, "Who like?" Here's a pillow. Oh, yeah. thank, thank you. Because they might have been sleeping on you, but yeah, at popcorn and cheese, we don't sleep on you. Oh, yeah. thank what you. Yeah. Yeah. To sleep on them. <laughs> thank you so much, Shout everyone, out, man. Oh, okay. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that was the guy from Clip Sprite West, Eldorado Park, Dylan Oliphant, proud owner of a BMW 1 Series <laughs> and 249 Air Jordans and 12 Yeezys. <laughs> and of course, ladies and gentlemen, before we wrap, this is there anything you'd like to shamelessly plug? Oh, yeah. Uh, Bioscope Sundays every Sunday and also, uh, there's, you know, my special on YouTube. Go check it out over the most ridiculous on Comedy Central. Uh, yeah, no, there's a lot. Just and yeah, thank you, Shepa. You need punctuation in your sentences. <laughs> just <laughs> just, just I, I went like from that. YouTube video to most ridiculous in one sense. So people, I don't are they gonna watch? Now most they think your YouTube, YouTube special is ridiculous. Okay, okay. if you understand me now. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> Bioscope Sundays yes, is a stop. thing of its own on Sunday. Comma. Then there's a, I have a YouTube special that I released um, uh, this year. Full stop. Uh, it's Full called stop. Uh, TT Comma. Live. Ellipse, on YouTube. Ellipses. Comma. Uh, yeah. Yeah, bro. You know, question mark, most question ridiculous mark, as well mark. on Comedy Central every day on at 9 p.m. Which one is this yeah. one? Sharp. Robot. <laughs> Yo, Flavor Tron, out, go get it. Uh, clean, neat, pure. The merch is in the building. Um, today's Valentine's Day, isn't it? Wednesday, the 14th. Is it? Yeah, so Ooh, uh, Valentine's Day special. To those of you clean. without lovers, happy <laughs> Valentine's Day. To those of you with lovers, happy Valentine's Day. To those of you with other lovers, hey. happy <laughs> Valentine's Day tomorrow. <laughs> Belen. <laughs> Phones are off. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 I forgot. Oh, oh, sorry. Thanks for the reminder, Deej. Uh, before I cut to Dylan, uh, 8th, uh, 7th or 8th? 8th. 8th of June, Empress Palace, Pop Ups Birthday Comedy Show. Let's go. Tickets are available at Compu Ticket. Please make sure you get your tickets. Most Ridiculous playing Monday to Friday, every day on Comedy Central at 9 p.m. Uh, popcorn and cheese, music. Video. Uh, video loading soon. Observe. But please uh, get the track on Spotify, YouTube. Uh, all uh, digital platforms. All digital platforms. Dylan, anything you want to plug? Are you opening a shop? <laughs> um, I am doing. A, I'm doing. A, I'm doing one-man shows around the country in oh, yes. March. Mas oh, yes. A comedy show called Massacre Tickets at Banya Theatre. Dot Co. Dot Zere. And web tickets are be coming to PE, Cape Town, Durban, and Pretoria. Massacre. Massacre. <laughs> you heard it from the man himself. <laughs> Massacre is on the road touring PE, Cape Town. Durban. Durban, 
Pretoria. Bloemfontein. Pretoria. <laughs> Pretoria. <laughs> Dylan is coming. Yo, Dylan, thank you so much for joining us today on Popcorn oh, yeah. and Cheese, my brother. Well, appreciate uh, it. We look forward to your tour. We look forward to your yeah. new one, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah man. And uh, we look forward to sharing the stage and rebuilding oh, yeah, this comedy man. industry this with you, man. come back again. For yeah, sure. Please. That's what I want to talk oh, yeah. about. From the corn that pops. And the cheese that's great. Yeah. We, we are, are Robo Pops. And, and just, just like, like Dylan's, Dylan's tour new... dates. Yeah. We are We're out. out. <laughs> See, it's, it's... the mind. So the boy doesn't know. Right? This was used to settle Asian problems. I'm a divorce. You're gonna tell me about this boy? I'm gonna use my eye tricks. You don't know them. I want to raise out my eye. So this boy better watch out. I'm ready. Let me guess, he probably tried to make it sound all philosophical and shit, right? Dog, this is rock, paper, scissors. Just play. Rock! 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 Very talented. There's no doubt in my mind that we are winning this thing. You know? With all the skills that I taught him in this very dojo. Oh, my brother, trust me. We are winning this thing. It, has he told you guys about the eye technique? I taught him that. This boy is a beast. I once saw this boy win 20 fights in a row. 20 matches in a row. And he was just using scissors. He's so good with the scissors. One might even say he's a lesbian. Three, two, one, go! Rock, paper, scissors! I'm a cheese girl, I'm a cheese boy, da. We motivate, then we laugh as well. Stay on brand, never hard to sell. Got real chats, na my LOL. So we both got gang and we blessed as hell. See a Lala story. Pitting on my guest, a nice and moy. You wanna my bundles, not of joy. Said it's some pop pops and robot boys. Popcorn and cheese. Popcorn and cheese. 